Hi, Pete Moore, of Shooting Sports Magazine. Welcome to Gunmark TV. And welcome to something rather special. This is Rigby's Highland Stalker. Uh, it's a classic Mauser-style gun. Rigby have been around 300 years and they've always been offering quality guns. And they got hooked up with the original Mauser company at Obendorf uh, at the turn of the century. And they were the official sort of UK importers for England and the colonies and the Commonwealth, which is really nice. The original gun was called the, Stork, uh, the Highland model. This is called the Highland Stalker, and it's virtually identical. It uses classic Mauser long action, um, two locking lugs, external extractor, claw, blade type ejector. Um, this is a, this design wise compared to a modern rifle. It's it's old. There's no spring plunger ejectors and things like that. It is what it is. Um, as can be seen, it comes with iron sights. These are rig beats express style. You've got a fixed 100 yard notch, a 150 yard notch, and then 250 yard notch. Whether you want to push it that far on game these days, I, I, I very much doubt it. Up front, a, uh, a blade on a ramp with a white, white tip to it in a, in a removable protector, which is quite, again, quite classic. But on the other hand, you're shooting this gun a fair bit, and the sights are actually very nice. This big shallow V comes up easily, and it's no problem popping. Uh, mid-sized clays with it at 100 yards, which I think is quite nice. Uh, probably the only modern uh, concern that they involve is the better safety. The old Mausers had a flag safety which went 180 degrees over the top, which was cumbersome to use, but also depending, it made you have to mount your scope high because it, because the blade, had, the lever had to go through 180 degrees. This one is what I call a Winchester style, three position, far up the top, red, middle, you get safe with bolt operation, and up there, full safe, everything locked up. I mean, Ruger use it, number companies use it, but this is, this is all going way back again. Feed is from a five round, uh, for a four round magazine, floor plate system, so gun loads through the top, uh, usual way with the floor plate mag, nice big generous ejection port, if you need to chuck another round in, it's not a real problem. The gun is beautifully finished, it's got a black nitride uh, barreled action, the bolt's left in the white, the, uh, the extractor claw is from what I call peacock blue, as is the magazine platform. Trigger is very nice, standard single stage Mauser, nice broad curved wide blade and it breaks very nicely. Stock is grade 5 Turkish walnut, nicely checked, not too rough, not too smooth. You can hold this gun in any weather. Um, and a classic red recoil pad at the back with a black spacer. Sling fitting is quite amusing and something I do take issue with. It has a fixed eye on the barrel and a fixed eye on the stock. The actual sling is very nice. It's a good quality piece of leather. But it's held on by what is pretty much a pair of rawhide boot laces. Now, I'm not saying it's not traditional, but with a beauty like this, I would not trust it to little bits of leather. I'd sooner have some, some sling swivels. As I said before, the gun is intended to be shot with iron sights, but Rigby, for the test, have fitted in a set of um, Optilock mounts, which are used by Mauser and Sarah as well, because Rigby is all part of the L O group, which own those, those four brands. So you can have, go iron sight, uh, or you can go a red dot. This is a, a um, Aimpoint Micro H2, and what it is, Rigby has contracted them out to make a model for them with a bridge mount that just clamps on, like so, you push the levers forward, like so, and then you go a red dot. And I'm not a big fan of red dots, but I, again, I've been shooting this red dot. And though it looks a bit strange on what is a classic rifle, a very high-tech unit, it's actually, again, really good. But really, for the average hunter who has the money to buy one of these babies, a scope is where it's going to be at. And this is my Shirovsky 1.7 to 10 by 42 which is sort of a very good compromise scope for close in work as well as um oh, sorry it's a bit fiddly to get in sometimes so do apologize okay that's on there now and it's just good old scope goes at 1.7 if you're shooting pigs or anything up close or driven and up to 10 if you want to shoot something longer ranges Ammunition wise, 
the gun is regulated for a 140 grain soft point bullet. Um, the caliber is 757, which is the old Mauser caliber, but Rigby also call it 275 Rigby. Horn did make the ammo for it at the 140 grain. Uh, I couldn't get hold of any, sadly. Um, Ruag um, Ammo Tech UK kindly lent, gave me some ammo, 757 162 grain classic, which is the old Brennica torpedo round. And I also made up some reloads on, on, on the fly, 140 grain Sierra soft tip, uh, which is sort of approximating what the gun should be shooting. So, if we have a few shots with it, we'll show it. See? No, no mag change, just drop the rounds in, drop them in, pull them back. So used to magazines these days, top loading guns can be a little bit fiddly till you get your head around it. So capacity is four, action's nice. On these guns there's no spring, spring plunger ejector, it's a blade at the back so you've got to be quite aggressive when you open the gun up, otherwise you, you have slow ejection, so that's the way to do it. If you baby it like this, then it's not so clever. So anything like this, bang, bang, in and out, in and out. Wise that reloads doing 2,800 feet per second, and the um, ID Classic is doing about 2,600, and they both produce round about 2,450, 480 foot pounds. Not amazingly powerful by today's comparison, but good enough to get the job done. I mean, this is a beautiful rifle. Uh, the sad thing is, it's just under six and a half thousand pounds, um, and that's the way it is because it's built out of very, very top end materials. If you feel adventurous or you like a gun that reminds you of the good old hunters like Bell and uh, Corbett, then this is the gun for you.